Hello and welcome to Saturday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, where I am against the clock today. Um, yes, life has caught up with me. Uh, what? Why is that, you may ask? Well, I basically, um, yes, I've had my sisters over today and it is now, I can tell you, it's seven o'clock in the evening, UK time. Now, given that this video has to go live in an hour and a half's time, if I have any problem at all with this puzzle, this could be the first time in three years that there's no cracking the cryptic video. I don't even want to think about that. That, that would not be a funny thing. Um, so I'm relying on you, Bremster. We are going to be having a go at a puzzle called Endeavour by Bremster. And Bremster has been utterly brilliant um, and, well, sort of created a hybrid of two of my very favourite things in Sudoku. Fog of War, which is this new, uh, this new idea where you reveal the fog gradually if you can complete the puzzle and also you can see down here there's quadruple clues so Bremster has uh, what did I learn I learned I learned a new meaning of the word roulade earlier today a roulade is a melodic embellishment which is a rather beautiful phrase and I think that's what Bremster has achieved here a melodic embellishment of basic well or just quintessential fog of war with the addition of quadruples and apparently this is an approachable puzzle which is a delightful thing now before we kick off, I will read the rules in a moment, but my first instruction to you is do not cheat. These fog of war puzzles, they are works of art because you have to study the logic in the white cells you can see and figure out. So say we worked out what that digit was, it would reveal the fog around that cell. So by using logic on the white cells, we should be able to gradually solve the puzzle and gradually clear the fog, which is a great treat. Now, some, on some videos where we've solved Fog of War puzzles, we've had comments from people saying, I completed the puzzle in 1 minute 22 seconds. It was very easy. And that is because, because of this mechanic, you could literally guess the possible answers to this cell. And when you pick the correct one, it will reveal the fog. So you can basically get all of the fog cells if you're prepared to guess very quickly indeed. That is not solving the puzzle in the way that Bremster intended it. So please don't do that. Please do not cheat, um, but do have a go. Now, these are the rules. We've got normal Sudoku rules apply, uh, which means we're going to need to put the digits one to nine once each in every row, in every column, in every, in every three by three box. We're then told the grid is covered with fog except for some initial cleared cells. Placing correct digits into cells clears the fog from all adjacent cells. Uh, digits in cages must sum to the number in the top left corner of the cage if, if given. Okay, we are given. We're given the cages down here. So those three digits have to add up to nine. Digits may not repeat within cages. So it's basically normal killer Sudoku rules, except there might be some cages in the grid that have no totals in them. Um, digits in a quadruple circle must be placed at least once in the four cells touching that circle. A question mark is wild and may refer to any digit. So it looks like we've got some question marks poking into poking into this this box. I'm not quite sure what that clue is doing there. Why? I fear I may not be understanding something. I don't understand why why you'd have a quadruple clue with two question marks in it because it's just saying we have to put two digits around those four cells and obviously we already know that. I don't get that but anyway those are the rules. Now I've got a couple of announcements before we get cracking and tackle the puzzle so bear with me for that. Um, I've told you about my sisters. I am also feeling a little bit delicate today as well. So you have to be gentle with me, especially in the comments. Uh, I had a very enjoyable evening out last night with in London, catching up with some old friends. Um, yeah, but the old friends, um, they plied me with, with too many drinks. It was entirely their fault. Very, very naughty. Um, birthdays, some special birthdays today. Uh, KNT, the brilliant, brilliant, genius constructor. It's KNT's birthday. Woofer ZFG. It is Woofer's birthday as well. Um, now, Woofer's, uh, I'm so sorry. Um, Jacob, your collaborator in chief, um, did write to us and say, could we do one of your puzzles today? And had my sisters left earlier, I had every intention of doing that. 
Um, so you can blame my sisters. Feel free to do that. They, they have they have consumed my time today. And given that it's now 7.04 p.m., I really don't think I can take on your five star out of five difficulty puzzle with any hope of this video going live by 8.30. So forgive me. I will try and look at it at some stage. Um, then what else can I talk to you about? Um, Yes, I've done happy birthday, KT. Happy birthday, Woofers. Happy anniversary to Brendan over there in Illinois. Uh, your wife Karen wrote to us. I understand it's your 17th wedding anniversary today. Many congratulations. Uh, and I think you might be apart today because I think one of you is traveling. I'm not sure which one. But Karen, let me tell you, Brendan, she wrote some very nice things about you indeed. So you're doing something right. And I hope you have a brilliant day and a happy wedding anniversary. And then finally, I want to say a very happy birthday and thank you to Stein, who I think has turned 32 today over there in Norway. Um, I want to thank you for your moving email. I really did appreciate it. I'm so thrilled, Stein, with how you're doing. And let me tell you that that chocolate cake you described sounds extremely good and I'm slightly jealous, but enjoy that today and have a great birthday. Now, the only other thing I need to mention is for our patrons over on Patreon, where I want to share something for, with you that Troy Settle produced, which is really, really rather cool. I hope you'll be able to hear it. Look at the graphics and the Moonlight Sonata. So this, this was a celebration of our, um, of our monthly reward. The, the Nightmare on Sudoku Street from the Skunk Works, um, which was April's monthly reward. And the following people managed to solve the entirety of that hunt. Very well done to Antoine Quai Laborde, Thomas Sylvester, Chris O'Brien, Ben Batera, Martin Collins, Philip Irwin, David Landrum and Tony Moran, Pavel Zielinski, Michael Sager, Jack Knorr, J.D. Barty, and Brighton Benson, you all solved all 19 puzzles from that hunt correctly. Congratulations. And now we turn our attention to Endeavour and let's see what Bremster, the doyen of the uh, Sudoku community, has got in store for us. Um, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual. That will take you to a page that looks identical to this one where you can play the puzzle on whichever device takes your fancy. But now I get to play let's get cracking and we're going to start i think by noting some little a little bit of arithmetic so seven plus nine is 16 and i know from many years of doing killer sudoku that there is only one way of making five different digits add up to 16 and that's with the numbers one two three four and six and i now see the purpose of this quadruple clue because the one and the two in this box have to be around those squares so that must be a one two pair and these must be a three four six triple and that now cannot be a two because this would need to be a five so we're going to get right we're going to get a digit so we have to stop and pause and reveal i do love these puzzles and then reveal again whoa we've got all sorts going on so these are less exciting uh these ones down here because these are not going to reveal any fog but oh ah right okay well now i yes <laughs> so i thought this quadruple clue was two question marks it's apparently not it was a two question mark and then a three question mark so you can see where do we put two and three around this quadruple clue well the two's going to have to go there and the three's going to have to go there and that's cleared more fog and it's made that okay well this nine cage now can't be two three four can it because there's going to be too many fours in row nine of the grid so it must be three one five and the one has to go here and the five has to go here and now the three around this quadruple clue gets placed here. Now I'm going to be careful to place. That was almost a three in the corner of that, that rectangle. It doesn't really deserve a song. But so far, this is extremely pleasant and not as taxing as I feared it might be. Right, we've got a seven, eight, nine. Triple left to place in box nine. We have got a six cell 21 cage, which we can immediately populate with pencil marks. 
because how do you add how, how do you make six cells add up to 21 well there's only one way it's got to be one two three four five and six and we've already got the three so these squares need to be one two four five and six and this square is not one or two and that square is not five or six and that square is not one or two and that square seems to be able to be anything but we've also got a quadruple clue there okay yeah so Well, this is a seven, is <laughs> what I think we're being told here. Because five and six have to live somewhere around that quadruple clue. And they can't live in those squares, so they must live in these squares. So these are a five, six pair. So these have to include seven, which means that is a seven. That gives us some more, uh, some more stuff. This is not a seven anymore. We've got a seven in a 10 cage. So these two squares, right, that square's got to be a one or a two. Um, because how are we going to make this domino add up to 10? We can't use three, seven, and we can't use four, six. So we know we're using either one, nine, or two, eight. And the one, two pair means this is a one or a two. This is an eight or a nine. This square is not five or six by the power of Sudoku. We've got a one, two, four triple in the box. So the right. So the four, where's the four in that triple? And the answer is in one of those two squares. So neither of those two squares can be a four, or the four would repeat in the 21 cage. We've now got a five, six pair in the 21 cage, so that's not able to be a five or a six. Um Okay, that might not have done. That might not might not have done enough. Okay, so what about in this box? Ah, yeah, okay. Where does three go in box six? And the answer is in one of those two squares. And those two squares look down and stop a three in the corner. Bremster, you absolute rotter. Um, ah, we were all ready to sing. Right, look, that's not a four now. So we've got a one, two pair in our 21 cage. And that's the only place, therefore, that four can live in it. Oh, I see. So these are from 3, 8, and 9. So there's a 3, 7, 8, 9 quadruple in the final column. And a, yeah, that's a 3 hiding beneath this quadruple clue. Yes, okay, that's interesting. So where does the 3 go around that quadruple clue? It can't go in this column because of the three at the bottom of the grid, the naughty three that stopped the three in the corner. And it can't go there because if there's a three there, you can't put any three at all in box six. So that's a three, I think. And that's going to clear some fog. Hooray. Uh, and there's a seven around this quadruple clue as well. Now... Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. Okay, because there's a 7 in here, there's no 7 there. So that's a 7, and that's going to clear more fog as well. And now we've got a 21 cage that we've already got 10 in. So these two squares have got to add up to 11. And that feels... well, that, that's definitely restricted, actually. Oh, yeah. Look, okay. Let's look at this column, because I've not put 4, 8, and 9 into it. So those two squares are from 4, 8, and 9. Now look, this can't be 4, because if this is 4, that would need to be 7 to make the maths add up, and we'd have two 7s adjacent to one another. So this is 8 or 9. This is 4, revealing fog. This square is 2 or, well, it's two or 3, and it's not 3. Because So if this was 8, this would have to be 3 for mathematics, but it, that would break the column. So that's a 9. This is a 2. This is an 8. So this is a, let's just double check, that's a 2, revealing some fog. This is a 1. So, oh, I see. So if this is a 1, this is a 2 by the power of cage non-repetitiveness. That's a phrase that just trips off the tongue. Um, now, okay, what have we done with this? Have we... Oh, I see. Look, this column has got a 5, 6 in the top of the grid. 
and this square here is a 9 because there's an 8 in the in the box so that's a, this is a 9 these two squares are now a 7 8 pair and ooh, we're running out of ideas now aren't we we've got 1 3 and 8 at the top of column 7 and that's part of quite a large cage. Look, we've got at least a seven cell cage. But the problem here is we don't know whether this cage grows. So it could be as much as a nine cell cage. It's at least that many cells. We can say that with certainty. Um, right, hang on, let me just take an audit. I've got a seven, seven sitting around this quadruple clue. So. I don't think I can use that. No, right, it must be something to do with this cage, or this cage. You can see this cage is definitely coming up into box two. No, it must be this cage, I think. Yeah, okay. All right, I see it. It's quite it's cunning. So look at the wrench-shaped cage, which may not be the full extent of the cage, and ask where 8 goes now in this column. Because because it can't repeat in this in yellow, it can only go there, I think. So that's going to clear some fog, and it does. This is not an 8. This cage now now adds up to 37 which is very nice okay now 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 i'm going to have to inform you about a secret i think um now the secret is something i only tell my favorite people but if you're still with me 16 minutes into this video you are of course in that part of the venn diagram now the secret is that any complete row of a sudoku any complete column or indeed any complete box um, by the rules of Sudoku, must contain the digits 1 to 9 once each. And if you add up the digits 1 to 9, you get 45. So imagine for a moment that this cage wasn't 7 cells large. Imagine it was 9 cells large. What would the number be in the top left-hand corner of the cage? Well, it would be a 45 because the cage cannot contain a repeated digit. So it would contain all of the numbers. Well, this is not a nine cell cage this is a seven cell cage that adds up to 37 so it's missing two digits and those two digits must sum up to the difference between 45 and 37 so the two digits that are missing sum up to eight but we know there's not a one missing from this cage so it's not missing one and seven and we know there's not a three missing from the cage so it's not missing three and five so the only thing it can be missing that adds up to eight the only two digits it can be missing are two and six well, where are we going to put six in the column if we can't put it in yellow? The answer is there. So that's a six, that's a six, that's a five. Nine around that quadruple clue has to be there. Now what's going on here? We've got we've got a we've got a cage that's doing at least this. Um, let me just oh, oh okay, so I must be using I don't know what I'm, I'm not using the normal version of the software today because normally I have my fluorescent green available to me and I've just noticed I haven't got that available. So, so, yeah, uh, well, this cage is at least that. It could also be that. It can't be this and it can't be this, can it? Hmm. Uh, nine, nine is up there. I just don't. I almost. Well, I don't. I don't think there's any point making a pencil mark like that. Oh, look! It's going to be eight. Where does eight go in this in this central region? And the answer is in one of those two squares. So eight is in one of these three squares. Um, we might be about to get a visit from a little person. I can hear a little person approaching. <laughs> um, 
Um, oh. Ooh. Have we got Sudoku on these digits? What have we got? We've got four, five, seven, and seven looks quite difficult. Oh, no. No, nine. Ah, right. That's what this clue is doing. Where does nine go in column six? Not those two squares and not there. So it goes there. So we've got four. Oh, so we're now where does seven go? Aha, right. Okay, so it was predictably enough. It was Sudoku that I wasn't doing. So now I've got a four five pair, which might be resolved. Let me just think about that. Mm, and maybe it's not resolved. Uh, I've got I've got all these possibilities for making useless pencil marks. Oh, this cage. Yeah, okay. So the, I was suddenly thinking, can I use cage totals? But I can't use a cage total on this because I don't know. That is going to be its top left cell, isn't it? And there is no total in it. That digit. And that digit don't go in this cage however big it is or well, they don't they don't go they don't at least go in this part of the cage so that is a nine cell sort of extra region of the puzzle ah oh that's sick right that's very pretty this is lovely okay so let's actually let me just explain what i was thinking then i was looking at this part of the the cage i don't know how big the green cage is but it's at least those cells now look at this cell which is not in the green cage or at least it, it, it's not in you know it, it's you can see it's fenced off from it can this cell go in anywhere in green no it sees those four in its box and these three in its column the same is true of this this can't repeat in green so this little domino here let's let's make it blue this blue domino doesn't repeat in those green cells. And that means that that P shape is all nine Sudoku digits. But that's huge for these three cells now because it's forcing roping in these three columns. These three digits, where do they go? In box two. And the answer is they go there by Sudoku because they can't repeat in the cage. Now, if they go there, these digits are from four, five, seven, and eight. I'm actually going to, pe I am going to pencil mark that. But you can now see I've not put one in this box anywhere. So that's a one. I don't know if that, is there any fog to clear? Yeah, that's cleared. I think that has cleared something. It's, it's made, well, it, it looks like that. Need, oh, hang on. That is, oh, that's a little bit of a, is that a glitch in the software? Can I see that that's 69 when I do it like that? I'm not sure. Maybe my eyes would... No, maybe I can't. There seems to be something going on. Um, but this, yes, this cage, I think, is a 69 cage. Um, right, but it... Ah, uh, okay. But if there's roping going on, where do the 1, 2, and 3 go in this box now? They've got to go there. And if that's a 1, 2, 3 triple, I can now place 9 here. Um, aha, there we go. And it is a 69 cage, so that's a 6. This square is a 4 or a 5, and it can't be a 4. So this is 5, this is 4, this is 5. These squares are not got 5 in anymore. That square's not 8. This square's not 7. This square's not 4. This square's not 2. And, okay, so we can repeat. This has got to be 4, 7, and 8 at the bottom. That's not 4. And these squares have got to be 5, 6, and 9. And that's not 9. That's not 6. That's not 5. There's a 7 around here. Ah, that's useful now. So this 7 um, is going to be on the left-hand side because it can't be in those squares. And now we ask where seven goes in the bottom row of the grid. And there seems to only be one place to put it. That cleared some fog. 
it leaves me with a 4-8 pair. Oh, and a 3. There's now a 3 around here. And that 3 can only go there. So that's 3. That's 7. Loads of fogs getting cleared. The 7 gives me a 7-8-8-4. Seven, eight, eight, We've got a 15 cage now, which is at least going to here. So the minimum sum of those two digits is at least nine. Ah, hang on. Well, I know what that digit is then. Yeah, okay. So what I'm thinking is because I can't put one, two and three in either of those squares, which are clearly part of the 15 cage. If I made this a four or five pair, this would have to be a six, which it can't be, or lower. So this is a digit that's lower than six, and the only digit it can therefore be is two, which is rather lovely. Now, now that's revealed a six and an eight here. There's, there's loads of stuff to look at. That's a six up here. This is an eight down here. Ah, so the eight down here looks at that square, which makes that a four, which makes that a seven, which makes that an eight. Oh, come on. Okay, so now I need four, five, and six along here, and one, three, and eight along here. And that square is not a three by Sudoku, and it's not an eight by quadruple, so it's a one. This is not got one in it, it has got a three, eight pair. I've revealed, I know I shouldn't do that, should I, and think that I can read that. It looks like a question mark on the top. What other digit could it be from the options available? Could it be a... No, I don't think it could be a 5 or a 6. I think that's a question mark, which is not going to be useful. Oh, look, these two squares now do add up to 13. Because I see, this cage is bounded. Before it could have been like that, but now it can't. So these add up to 13, and they're not 8, 5, and they're not 6, 7. So these are 4, 9. Aha! Which means this is 5 that's six this is nine and now we're going to be able to fill in some digits along the bottom we've got a one five pair here we've got a two six eight i want to say triple at the bottom with that not being two one five what about those digits they've got to be nine and something nine and seven yes so the seven goes here the nine goes here we didn't get to clear any fog with that That can't be six, because we've definitely got a six in this quadruple. Hang on. <laughs> Hang on, what have we got to do now? Seven, okay, we can do seven Sudoku. That is what we've got to do now. Because look, that is a seven, and that is right bang in the middle of the remaining bank of fog. So here we go. Boom. Okay, so we revealed a 19 cage which is four cells large it's a tetris piece so okay so these squares add up to 12 um, i don't know there's probably about there's probably a lot of ways of doing that let me just let me just think about this ah Sudoku, of course. That's a six in the corner. That's a five in the corner. Have we got any opportunities for threes in the corner? One. We've got one more opportunity for a three in the corner. Um, if Oh, if that was a three in the corner, you couldn't put it in the 19 cage. So these three... Okay, so if that, if that was three, these couldn't add up. Well, they would add up to 12, but not using a three. So they couldn't be three, four, five... They couldn't be 138, which they couldn't be anyway. Um, there's other things they can't be. Uh, but, or actually, are there? The other two digits would have to add up to 9, and they couldn't use 27 or 36, so they'd either be 4, 5, or they would be 1, 8. So, okay. So, so what am I proving here? If this is, 
<laughs> I've only I'm only ruling out those two options by putting in a three in the corner. So it'd be anything else that, that wasn't that, which I think there are loads of things that could be. Um, and anyway, I should not try and do these puzzles by focusing on trying to put threes in the corners of them. Let me just have a think about this. What about Sudoku on that digit? That looks very restricted. It sees 1379 in the column and 456. Four, five, six, and seven in the row, so it's only can only be two or eight, I think. This row has an awful lot of high digitage in it, so these squares have got to be from low digits. That's not able to be one or three, so that's also very restricted. This is quite a low number. Four, one. Uh, okay, so that digit is small. It, well, it's not small. It's it's not able to be as high as seven. Right. If this was four and this was one, which is the lowest digits we could put in this in those two cells, then because those three digits need to add up to twelve, that would be a seven, and the seven would repeat. So that doesn't work. Which means this digit cannot be as high. A seven so it's it's a maximum of six so okay so the maximum size of a digit in this cage then or in the three cells that add up to 12 is six so it's either 615 which it's not 624 which it probably isn't if it's 624 that cell's got to be 6 because it sees 2, 4 in the row. So this would be 6, this would be 4, and this would be 2. And everything would flow from that. That would be a 4, 8 pair. Okay, but it might not it might not have to have a six in it because it could be three, four, five. So it's so it's it's down we're down to two options for this gauge. It is either six two four with a very explicit six here, or it's three four five, so it's always got a four in it. So ah, ah that's it, there we go. So if it's always got a four in that string of digits, that cell is a nine. Aha. That was right, it cleared the fog, so that's a 4, so this isn't a 4. I know one of these is a 4. This is a 9. Wow, where does 9 go? In box 1, it goes exactly there. Oh, I see, right, and I know that's not a 6, don't I? Because we worked out this is either 3, 4, 5, or it's 6, 2, 4, with the 6 being there. So the 6 is never there, and that means this quadruple clue requires a 6 to be here. So this is a 6, which was correct because it cleared the fog. Now we've got a 4, 5 pair. We've got a an 8 at the bottom. Uh, the 8 at the bottom of the grid is going to do my 8 there, look, and that's a 3. So now we look like we're about to cook with gas, don't we? We've got we've only got one and five left to place in column two. And it's still not quite resolved though. Uh oh no it is. That's lovely. Okay, now now remember if this was 624, well it can't be 624 because that's going to break that cell. So this has got, oh no it's 345, I don't get a 3 in the corner. It's 345. Okay, um, it's 345 Bremster, what went on there? It's 345, okay so this is 1, this is 5, so this is 1, so this is 3. Ah, ha, 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 here we go. So this is 8. Um, that 3 means this is 5, so that's 4 and that's 3, that's 3 and that's 1, that's 1 and that's 2, that's 4 and that's, no, that's 5. Um, we need 
2 and 6. Okay, so the 6 here is useful. So we get 2, 8, 6, 2, and something. 6, I want to say. Is that correct? It might be. Let's click tick. Yay! <laughs> you have successfully navigated your way out of the fog. Congratulations. Um, thank you very much. Um, that was extremely enjoyable. Endeavour. Why is it called Endeavour? Is it a reference to Morse? Always a good quiz que question, that. The first name of Inspector Morse. Um, I don't know. I don't know why it's called Endeavour, but it was very pretty. My favourite bit of it was this bit. This virtual nine-cell P cage. And that forcing the one in this box to be there. I also quite liked that being an eight, actually. And... Yeah, and it was elegant how that how that this sequence worked. So there's lots to admire, loads to get your teeth into. A combination of two magnificent rule sets, absolutely fabulous. I have finished it relatively quickly. I've now got, well, it's, it's 7.35. I've got to edit the video, export it, and upload it to YouTube. And then YouTube has to bless it with processing by half past eight. Wish me luck. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Um, uh, let me know in the comments how you got on. I enjoy the comments, especially when they're kind. And we'll be back later. I've already said that. See you. <laughs> Bye for now.